Now I've always missed fairways, but maybe in a slightly different context. Come with me on a journey back to 2020 BC, before Covid. In July 2020 I embarked on a golf trip that would take me to seven regions of Scotland, 21 golf courses, lots of great people met, whiskey drank and memories created. And it all started in East Lothian and I'd be staying with an old friend, the legend that is Malcolm Duck. Hello golf was played on the East Links as far back as the 17th century. It was the duo of Ben Sayers and James Braid who designed and oversaw the opening of the now Glen Golf Club in 1906. And as you can see, the location is breathtaking. The 13th really is a special golf hole, with little room for error. And as you can see, don't make the mistake of coming up short. Next up, it was the host venue for Scottish Opens, Gullen, boasting three quality links golf courses. This time I played number two and took on a hickory challenge. I told you we were gonna take on a hickory challenge. It's a bit of a challenge. It's 196 we just got this in into this flag and into the breeze. But we've got, is this a driver effectively? It's a kind of fairway wood. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're all, I, I, I'm just getting into hickory, so I don't know all the bits and bobs, but Boris who runs a Jack White shop. Yeah, yeah. Clubs up in the village, which is fantastic. But uh, a little bit of loft, but the great thing with hickory is really slow you swing down, really soft hands, and let the club head do the work. A lot more whippy, a lot, yeah. lot more whippy, a lot whippier, so you can work the ball a lot more. So we're into the wind, slow down that swing. Slow down that swing. And, and shut your eyes, <laughs> close your eyes. <laughs> Couldn't you pick an easier hole? Tell you about this ball. Do you know what? I don't care where it's finished because that was absolutely perfect. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Yeah. I know we all play golf for different reasons, but uh, for me, this is the reason I play golf. I've just played a par three with a Hickory Golf Club, but then I just walk down to this green, and wherever I look in front of me right now, it's just it's heaven. It's just absolutely stunning. So I found the bunker. You found the green. Yeah, mine's a local ball. <laughs> But you've got, you've got one for the definite win. One for the definite win. And with my, perhaps, uh, perhaps two for it. My old hickory putter that Marshy gave me. You know Andrew Marshall? Yeah. 
He's a great hickory golfer. I have to confess to using a modern club out the bunker. I forgot the rule. <laughs> we never saw that. We never saw that. Oh, go on. Go on! Well, that's good enough. Take that one Almost. away. Almost. So you got your three? Got my three. So I've got, uh, I've got this for the half. This is quite a bit different, the putter. Isn't it? Heavy head. Oh, you like it. Whoa! <laughs> oh, I thought I had that. Well, you had that. So the Hickory, the, 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 the Hickory Championships goes to Mr. Duck. <laughs> Hold on. So I, I, I'm not a great fan of very old whiskies. I, I feel they've lost some of their fruits and they go more like other spirits, brandies and so on. you. Correct. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Can't argue that one. Following an evening of talking and tasting whiskey with Mr. Duck, I would take on my final course. A relatively new kid on the block with character that defies its tender years. It was time to play Craigie Law. Right, Malcolm, I'm about to kick things off on East Lothian on a course I've never played before at Craigie Law. Anything you can tell me about Craigie Law? I love it. 20 years old. Um, not quite Lynx, but plays Lynxy, sitting right beside Kilspindy. Yes. Beautiful Lynx golf course. Um, really, really nice design. I, I think you really enjoy it. The views are stunning, and yeah, the yeah. people here are just really, really, really friendly. Um, Scottish, the Scottish, the senior, Scottish seniors, European tour, played, played here a couple of yeah, times yeah. as well. That says a lot. So you know, you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it. And it's owned by the, land's owned by the Earl of Weems. And they have a big, these families have big influences in golf because he owns the land here and it kills Bindi at Long Nidri. And way back then, in Mary Queen of Scots days, she would yes. have come and stayed at the big house. So right. This is where she started playing golf, she, going back to our cradle of golf. Onto this land. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. You'll enjoy it. Stunning, stunning views. Well, I look forward to it. it. I must admit, it looks impressive from up here. Some great yeah. views and uh, not a bad day for it either. No, beautiful day. I'm getting on that first tee. So yeah. you, can, you can drive the green, but yeah, risk you lay up and chip up. Risk and reward. We shall Thinking see. Thinking man's golf. We shall see. <laughs> So there's a great feel about Craigie Law. It's a very welcoming club, almost a laid back atmosphere, and the golf course itself, well, it sits in a pretty enviable location, as you can see. It really is a joy to play, and uh, I suppose, what more can you ask from a golf course? Massive slope on that. I think it needs pace and line. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Now I have a great affection for East Lothian. It was my first taste of golf in Scotland and remains a personal favourite. But it was time to move on. But before we do, let me introduce you to Eric Davidson with a poem that I know will resonate with every one of you. There's a marvellous game where Scotland's its home and it's a game that is truly unique. 
I know it takes out of your life, it gets you away from your husband or wife for at least oh, four or five hours every week. Now it's basically simple. You hit a wee ball with dimples with some clubs that you keep in a bag with the ultimate goal to get the ball into a hole that sits at the foot of a flag. But that's where the simplicity ends because as you all know, my friends, it's a game that can drive you demented. I mean, just when you've thought that you've played a great shot, next thing, you're wishing that it had not been invented. For example, you feel such a life when you've played a great drive and you've hit the ball square in the face or with golf you feel smitten until you discover you're sitting in that divot that's not been replaced or you hit a lovely wee wedge or a nasty wee hedge but you're in a bunker and it's then you remember you've been in the San Mayor and a French Legionnaire. In fact, you're an honorary member. But the thing is, to you, it doesn't matter if a dozen shots later you're trying to get out of that trap because, you see, you've got the bug, even though you look like a mug and the golfing world knows that you're crap. <laughs> so what do you do? Well, you pay for some lessons, get psychology sessions, you're determined to get yourself better, pay 400 quid for a driver, play with balls worth a fiver, wear the top of the range, Pringles sweater, you know who you are. You even take the decision to get Sky Television so you can sit and watch all the golf channels. You've even sued for divorce because you notice out in the course your husband or wife <laughs> burnt a hole in your flannels. Meanwhile, your mates are convinced that your head's full of mince. You're now the, you're now the biggest bore they've ever met. The thing is, it's sad but yet true. There are dozens like you who, when playing the game, tend to forget that Golf's no about fancy waterproof suits or spending fortunes improving your game. If you win or get beat to success or defeat, it's about, it's about being able to treat them the same. It's not the shots that you take, it's the friends that you make. The camaraderie with your fellow man. So be it wind, rain or sun, just go out, have fun. Enjoy your game while you still can. So all you golfers out there who throw your clubs in the air and are continually losing the heed. If you want a quiet life and keep in with your husband or wife, stay in and do the dishes instead. Enjoy your golf. <laughs>